let let us backtrack a bit. Globe was actually uh, playing the 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 part of a third telco or a second telco, uh, you know, decades ago. So I do not believe that um, a third telco is not the solution. I think it is it is actually the opposite. There is no business incentive, and I've been saying this over and over again. No business incentive for any private player to improve its services or lower prices if there is no effective competition in the market. And PLDT is, I think, competing with Globe, but not at a pace and at a level that would be beneficial to the consumers. Well, not optimal enough if you get not a third player. No. For example, in November, both Globe and PLDT increased their minimum broadband speeds for all the plants that they were servicing. And there was no real impetus for this. There's no big breakthrough in technology or what have you. But it was just the threat of that third player coming in. So people um, who are more in invested in this have noted that it's contestability in the market that really drives the services aspect of this whole sector. So you're saying a phantom was enough to actually drive behavior, but doesn't this go against conventional utility economics, or at least competition law in your case, which your firm right. is practicing, that a third player is needed or a fourth player is needed there to be able to spur that competition onward? Well, studies all over the world have shown that four to five players is optimal, especially in this sector. But, you know, when it's really here uh, more of a sim sign that all the other barriers to entry are too high that um, even someone with Telstra who's really interested in going into the market can't come into the market. So, well, we'll see. What yeah. and you were going to say, right. Grace. And also, um, in, if you look at network economics, if there are more players that have maybe smaller chunks or share in the market, then there is more um, incentive to cooperate, more incentive to better their services, to compete. So it can be viewed as cooperate, meaning share infrastructure so that they lower cost, compete in such a way that there is more innovation in the services, differentiate the services that each of the players offer. And if you have only two players, and there's really not much of a difference, so there's less choice for the consumer, and again, no impetus really for any uh, changes to this, you know, disruptive change to happen in the market. Well, what do you call it a duopoly or a highly competitive two-player setup? I mean, it's a rose by any other name. The question I have is, what can the government do now in absence of a third player? Well, for me, the main role of the government is to ensure that the regulatory environment is, has clear rules. It's, um, it has consistent rules that uh, will be applied to all players, big or small, and also to encourage that a uh, new player to come in by ensuring that our, all the policies are and regulation are um, consistently applied to everyone. We were talking about earlier about barriers to entry. A lot of these barriers to entry are set by government. So if government has the ability to scale back these barriers to entry and allow niche players to come in who want to come in, you would see a uh, big jump in services. Well, you know, this is a test case, as, as people have mentioned, about for the PCC. Are they seeing the commanding heights by allowing this to happen, or is there enough to claw back to make sure you have a level playing field, and possibly an entrant of the third player that you talk about? Um, we've talked to other people, and there is really no need for the big players to have that much spectrum all to themselves. They can shrink back the spectrum, and um, there'll be enough for both of them to compete and for a third player to enter. What's the golden mean solution here? Because it seems like PLD and Global are willing to take it to court. I mean, is there a way to have a you know, constructive approach here where the consumer benefits, a level playing field happens, and the big players you know, are assuaged, so to speak? Well, something's got to something's give, gotta give. Right, but <laughs> even the big players have indicated the willingness to cooperate with the PCC and the PCC itself in their statements. They haven't been as um, combative as they can. And a lot of the punches are really being pulled right now. So what you see, I foresee going forward is that there might be some, uh, a greater degree of clawback when it comes to the spectrum, but not that much, but certainly enough for a third player to come in. Okay, well, hopefully cooler and constructive heads will prevail. Thank you very much, Francis and Grace. Thank you.